evil-smelling fluffy rat and fancy dress. I'm sorry, Amberjack bellowed. Sorry that I forgot to say that it smells like I'm downwind of an outhouse around here. That vile stink must be wafting from under the crack of your door or the crack of your backside. He hammered the small round door with his fist for good measure. The blows loosened bits of dry leaves and dirt onto his head. Amberjack looked up and saw the precarious pile above the door of debris, bare branches, and dead roots the skunk had knitted together to make his home. One can only imagine the hazardous environment inside your little gassy chamber. A kick loosened the thick branch and knocked Jack on his head. Uh, a stockyard of flatulent donkeys is nothing on you, I wager. Another kick dropped a flurry of leaves and twigs around him, uh, dusting uh, his shoulders. Uh, I bet your mother. That did it. Without warning, without a sound other than the scraping of wood against stone floor, the little round door flew open. Uh, Thrust from the dark portal, Morton thronged Morton's backside. Raised as if saluting the town idiot, the skunk's fluffy black tail. Faster than you could count to three, a spritz of foul-smelling, oily liquid sprayed from the skunk's nethers. Faster than you could screw up your face in disgust, a second spritz had thoroughly ruined Jack's morning. Though he smiled and missed all his wheezing, for as soon as he saw the door start to pull open, Jack had pulled his mantle's hood over his head and face and tucked his hands under the leather covering his shoulders. The skunk spray struck true, but not a drop touched Amberjack's hair or skin. Mission accomplished. He coughed between gasps, backing away on hands and knees. He was too weak from lack of proper oxygen to trust his legs to hold him upright. Leaves and other debris sloughed from his shoulders and back as he wiggled backwards. The pointed tip of his hood was aimed directly at the skunk as if it were a dagger warding off further attack. Spots of fluid splattered and darkened the leather. Amberjack lifted his face to look into the dark doorway. The fluffy black tail lowered and disappeared into the gloom of Throgmorton's home. The skunk turned to face the old man. A look of distrust, anger, and wariness mingled on his dark, pointy face. The creature's eyes glittered in the gloom. He was half hidden by his door, poised as if to slam it shut at the slightest hint of retaliation from the man he'd just soiled. For someone whose day I'd just ruined, you don't look very upset, he said suspiciously. Oh, oh, be glad to know (coughs) that you've ruined both my day, my night, and any thoughts of eating. (coughs) I do want to thank you for your part in this day's work, however. (laughs) This day's work? What are you talking about? As I was trying to tell you earlier, I have been hired to perform an important task, and your spew was a crucial part of my plan. plan. Chimed in Jimmy, eight trees, six bushes, and three boulders back up the trail. (gasps) You used me. Morton Throgmorton inhaled sharply and clutched at the white fur at his breast. Besides being ignored, or belittled, or disdained, or shunned, skunks hated being used. Uh, Well, of course I used you, replied Jack, still on his hands and knees, crawling backwards through the leaf litter and brambles. If you weren't such a disagreeable creature, we might have entered into a mutually beneficial agreement. But now you had to be difficult. Anyway, I thank you once more for your contribution towards a task that will ultimately benefit everyone in the forest. (laughs) With that, before Throgmorton could charge him with tail held high, really... Jack had all the spew his stomach could handle, which was more than enough to carry out his mission. 
Jack staggered to his feet and ambled as fast as he could away from Morton Throgmorton's glade. After a few minutes, he heard a loud bang behind him as the skunk slammed his little round door shut. Jack pulled off his mantle from the inside, careful not to let any of the discolored parts touch his skin. Once off, he rolled the hood and shoulder covering as tightly as he could with a clean inside surface facing outwards. He was glad the mantle was made of leather proofed against rain through long soakings in a vat of linseed oil, suet, and beeswax. He tucked the bundle under his arm as he walked. The stench was muted, but still quite strong. <sighs> I'm gonna need a new mantle after this. <sighs> muttered the idiot. You'll forgive me if I ask you to walk downwind and, and, and several dozen yards for me, won't you, Jack? Asked Jimmy as he tried to keep ahead of the old man. The poor pig could not hold his snout, for he had no hands, and being a pig with a pig's superior sense of smell, he suffered just as much as the idiot did himself. Both man and pig gagged as they staggered as quickly as they could towards the patch of the wild wood where Amberjack had decided he would lay his trap. I I quite understand, replied Amberjack magnanimously, now that he'd gotten what he'd wanted, specifically a dose of Morton Throgmorton's finest spew. He brought the rolled mantle to his nose and sniffed it from one end to the other as if it were the finest cigar. Yeah, you smell that, Jimmy? Of course I smell it. The man in the moon can smell it. <laughs> and do you know what that is exactly? <laughs> oh, a failure? Uh, just in case you're not sure, Jack said with a finger tapping the side of his nose, that my pink friend is the sweet stink of success. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. If, if that stink equals success, Jimmy whined after he dry heaved. I'd hate to smell failure. Well, you know, it's not so bad once you get used to it. Your nose sort of grows uh, uh, numb, Jack added philosophically. Then he screwed up his face and smacked his lips as if having tasted something unsavory. Though I highly suggest keeping your mouth closed. Uh, Something about smelling and tasting it together uh, cuts through the numbness and makes it worse somehow. Uh, 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 How is this supposed to help you? uh, um, Help you again, Jack? Uh, To tell you the truth, it's not much of a plan. It really wasn't. You've been listening to Amberjack, Episode 7. Music Credits. Tycho Mechanics by Max Survey from his album Titan Effect. Into the Groove by Ian Post from his album Electric Fried. Once and for All by Ian Post from his album The Robbery Continues. Swiss by Ayal Raz from his album Mark Tracy. Rats, Cabins, and Bears, Oh My! by Kyle Preston from his album, Like Clockwork. And Tango for Clowns by Alain Perez from his album, Vintage Toys in the Attic. All are available on Artlist. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Very Nearly Dramatized Podcast. If you like what you hear and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing at verynearlypodcast.com. And on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Spreaker. Go to VeryNearlyPodcast.com for more details. All original stories, artwork, and recording created by Dennis Teroy. Copyright 2019 by Dennis Teroy. All music acquired from Artlist.com and other outlets are copyrighted by their respective owners. Thanks for listening.